five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Right from the off, their pace is blistering. Get ahead of it. Get ahead of it. Because you don't know what's going to happen. We, don't wanna, we didn't want to be playing catch-up. You don't know whether it's going to be a hurricane, it's going to be hot weather, it's going to be the, a wheel falls off or, or whatever it is. Yeah. You happy enough with that pace? I'm yeah. happy. So that pace is building as a fair cushion up. After the first hour, they're averaging 29.99 miles per hour. Nice. <laughs> That's well above record pace. They're happy, but their support team aren't. <laughs> Slow down now. You're working a little bit hard at the moment, you two, so you just need to ease back a little bit. We'll also save your bums as well. OK, nice, thank you. <laughs> Said OK, cheers. Yeah, yeah, and a big grin on their faces. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, they're silly boys <laughs> with a new toy. <laughs> I think he's going to do that all the way through. <laughs> nah, if it's about two in the morning, he'll get bored. <laughs> Despite all the advice from the pits, Guy and Jason keep up their incredible pace. Even as night falls, they don't let up. And after just three hours and 25 minutes, they've clocked up their first 100 miles. Guy and Jason pedal on into the night. Four hours, and they're not dropping off. From experience, the third hour is the one that gets you if you're not really ready for this. But they do seem to be acclimatising. And yeah, there's, there's no obvious sign of them dropping off. So. Maybe it's my machining that will fail before their bodies do it. <laughs> As evening turns into the early hours of morning, Guy, Jason and their trike are still going strong. And just before 4am, they reach a major milestone. They clock up 253 miles. They're halfway to becoming world record holders. I've got a smile. Got a flat. Oi. A puncture forces them to stop, something they were desperate to avoid. The team work fast, but the clock's ticking. The anxiety starts to build, doesn't it? You yeah. think, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, but this, yeah, how long have we got? We're just a You're okay. You're out. Okay. Okay. The stop wastes 20 precious minutes. After 12 hours, they've clocked up 316 miles. But then the wind and rain begins, and they're forced in again. They can't see where they're going on account of the screen. Water on the outside and condensation on the inside. We had to come in and we had to have holes drilled and save his brakes. They, were, they weren't very big. There were only two of them. But he's not going to help the air off, right but no, we had no choice. We had no choice. It's a short stop, but as they pedal on, Guy is clearly in pain. It's slow down there. Yeah. My willy was chafing. The inside of my legs and my backside. Chafing when you want them to rub together for 24 hours, you're going to get... Like nappy rash. Just the same, isn't it? Guys, chafing gets so painful, they're forced to make another costly stop. Don't matter how embarrassing it is, it's a potential showstopper. And it's definitely not something you can just go, oh, man up. I was going to change my shot. You just blather up in chamois cream. Bob open sores at that stage and putting chamois cream on that is a bit because he's tender. In dry clothes and with cream applied, they head out again. Okay. <laughs> but that stop wasted another 15 minutes. And now the storm proper arrives. It wasn't ideal for putting in fast laps on it. Can't see anything now at all. The side winds were like a gorilla hitting. Yeah. It was like moving us across the course, wasn't it? We, we were getting wet. Sprayed off the back wheel, didn't it? Yeah. 
We was wet enough as it was, because we was wetting our own wee and our own sweat. The lot times really start to drop off because of the vision. They are now averaging just 19 miles per hour. They're struggling to see, they're struggling to keep it going in the right direction, and they're working as hard as they've worked all day, but are going slower. In fact, they're coming through now, look. Uh, we were very elated early on, but now this is what records are all about. The huge winds now force them in again to get the canopy taped down as it's threatening to blow off. They're now pitting repeatedly. Everything in the bike is soaked and their pace has dropped off a cliff. After 16 hours, the effort of cycling and steering in such horrific conditions is taking a very heavy toll on Guy and Jason. Eventually, they can't go on. My lower back was, yeah, I was in agony. My Achilles, really sore. Just all the chafing. If we hadn't stopped, it would have gone wrong. We knew that the team of people that were in our pit would be able to look after us and, and put us right. Dr Gemma Milligan from Mike Tipton's team works on their injuries. As they finally prepare to set off again, they know the record is starting to slip away from them. <laughs> I'm waiting for this now. Because I've got the thing on me, on me todger, but then a bit of wee comes out. I'm wetting myself, and I'm just sat in, I'm just sat in my own wee. Sort of mop it out a bit before you sit down. Happily, though, conditions outside the trike are now improving. Oh, that's beautiful. That's lovely. Yeah, so, yeah. Feeling energised. A big effort could still put them back on track. Conversation in the bike stops, and ignoring the pain, they both just keep pedalling. The environment's right now for finishing the job. The wind's dropped, the sun's out. You just go, right, well, let's just finish the job now. Incredibly, after 20 hours, they're close to 500 miles, and a new world record is in sight. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the I'm just so chuffed that you asked me to do it and it took that away with me. At just before 3.30 p.m. on Sunday, August the 10th, after cycling for 20 hours, 53 minutes and 39 seconds, Guy and Jason complete 506 miles, meaning they've pedalled further together than anyone else ever before. How are you feeling? Well done, Guy. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for all your effort, yeah. boys. Yeah. Thank you for doing it. They've reached their target with three hours to spare, and those are three hours they don't intend to waste. We don't want to give, we don't want to give somebody who might want to, you know, go and beat our record a three hour start, do we? <laughs> I think we can get thick end with 50 miles. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. They resolve to cycle on intent on pushing what is now their world record as high as possible. It's just really nice when a plan that's been in the making for months comes together and brings together such determined and talented people. Oh, well, I think as far as an effort's concerned, then that's right up there with anything that I've uh, been involved with before. Guy is famous for being Guy, and his character, as much as his stamina, I'm sure, got him through, and Jason was there matching him. After the full 24 hours at 6.26 p.m., they've clocked up a staggering 565 miles. Thanks, 
Anybody out there, just try doing anything for 24 hours. I don't even care if it's sitting down. You'll struggle doing it. Now imagine doing that while cycling um, at around about 23, 24 miles an hour, and it'll just give you a handle on what's been achieved today. If there was ever a time or a place to fall out, it was in there, and we never had a crosswalk. <laughs> I'm dead proud of it. I'm really proud of it. Proud of yourself, <laughs> proud of the guy. That's pretty much it. I'm proud of you. Pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Amazing record. The only way of following the action is on the timing screen. Guy is off to a good start and faster through the first checkpoint than in any of his practices. 209. That's decent, that. Amongst the melee of the start line, chief rival Arai sets off on the 183. The timing reveals Arai is faster. He's two and a half seconds quicker. Guys into the middle sector and still riding round the bike's problems. But Arai matches him. 183, Arai. Still two seconds up on us. I think Guy's best bit is going to be like the top bit. That's more your TT, it's like Windy Corner. He's all right about it. Then he could like pull some time back on him. But then the timing screens fail. Oh, come on! There's no time. Oh, we haven't got any idea what's going on. Everyone is in the dark, and now Guy's in the most difficult part of the course, above the tree line, in the thinnest air, and with the biggest drops. It's down to him to ride as fast as he dare and hope the bike holds out. The way to deal with a race like that is to deal with it in the way I dealt with it. Ride until this point. Break at this point. Hit this apex. Give it a gear at that point. Let go of the throttle at that point. Yeah, there's no panicking going on inside the helmet because I'm 100% confident in where I'm going. That was only the case because I put the effort in. You want to get out what you put in. And by me putting the effort in, it allowed my race run to be calm, which it was. That race run was the, the calmest moment of the whole trip. I got to the top and I was a bit peed off, just because I knew I could have gone so much faster. All eyes turn to Arai finishing on the 183. The clock stops. Has Guy done enough to win? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> won by a second uh, from Arai. Yes! Congratulations! Yeah, yeah cheers. Yeah. On a homemade bike that is basically broken, Guy has overcome the two-second gap at halfway to become the first British winner at Pikes Peak by a solitary second. And he has no idea. I don't know, I don't know. Where was I in the exhibition? The top. That was a quick first exhibition. Quick first exhibition. First exhibition. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. I thought I ran like a bag of spanners, but we're first in class, so I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. 
Now we're talking. Man's got off the air. Thanks very much. What an adventure. That's the best thing in motorbike I've ever done. Like, without being. The best thing in motorbike I've ever done. It means. If he can beat 85 miles per hour, Guy will set a new world record for the fastest hovercraft. But the torrential rain and low lying mist are preventing any early morning high speed runs from taking place. The weather's bloody miserable. <laughs> it's not very warm. And you can see that, like, you can see it on the screen of the, on the lens of the camera. Not going to be easy though, boys. We all know that, don't we? We all know that. <laughs> While the weather clears, the build team make their final adjustments to the craft. The conditions are perfect, but they won't last long. Guy has to go now for his first attempt on the record. The clock starts as he passes the yellow boys. He keeps his throttle pinned, and although he's on the edge of taking off as he crosses the line a kilometre later, it's clearly a fast time. Guy now has to turn around and return. It's his average speed over both runs that counts, so he gives it everything. Oh my God, it's just gone up in here. Oh, no. Unbeknownst to Guy, the wind suddenly changed direction and lifted the nose at 76 miles per hour. The craft flew 30 meters through the air. The impact on landing tore the rear of the hull in two. I'll leave this engine going. I've turned that one off. So you tow me at your speed. The team packs the craft up and are all happy to try again. There's concern on the shore and in the craft. Guy feels that the handling has been affected by the impact. Now, I'm not the cleverest person in the world, but I know common sense and I know, all right, yeah, I've had a few warnings. Give it a couple of warnings. Yeah. I got to about 50 there and it lifted. I had to shut off. It seems to go in a straight line, but it only wants to go in a straight line when you're on the throttle. Do you try and push beyond that point? And I've been, I pushed me on that point, and I've ended up in hospital. You've got to be clever enough to know when enough is enough. You've got to be man enough to hold your hands up and say, yeah, this is not happening. It's not happening. The team gather to find out if they got anywhere close to the 85 miles per hour record. He got 79.18 miles per hour out. Yeah. And 71.18. 2.4 miles per hour in, yeah. giving you an average of 75.21 miles an hour. It was looking on, it was looking yeah. on. 75, maybe 10 miles per hour short of the world record, but it's still a UK record. It's the fastest speed ever recorded by a Brit in a hovercraft. He's done brilliantly. I mean, to put a total novice on there and go faster than most hover club people have ever gone, you know, is both brave, stupid and, and, and you know, very skillful with The average was 75, but the top speed peaked at an astonishing 82 miles per hour. To give us the opportunity to actually push that comfort zone a little bit and let some other idiot take the... <laughs> 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 take the range <laughs> was an opportunity we couldn't miss. Really. Right, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Mont in southern France is where, over the next two days, Guy Martin will attempt to set a new world speed record in a gravity racer and go faster than 84.4 miles per hour. Any words of wisdom? <laughs> Hold on. Come on, you can do something better than that. <laughs> Come on. Don't break it, don't break it. Yeah, don't break it. That's it, good. I'm looking forward to it. On the first run, Guy opts for a gentle rolling start.
Once he was up to speed, he just kind of got that perfect fast car noise as he went past it. It just sounded fast, it looked fast. It came down the hill and it just looked like a bullet. Worryingly though, when Guy checks the top speed on his GPS, it's clear he is way off the 84.4 mile per hour target. 71. 70, 71. Almost 72. For run number two, the team removed the standard BMX tyres they've been using for practice and replaced them with something yeah. they hope yeah. will be a lot quicker. We've put some proper road tyres, 20 inch road tyres on slicks. On this run, the team also had in a push start. <laughs> And immediately, it's clear that the new tyres aren't helping the racers' handling. It was just skipping and it was getting a bit unstable, you know, like a little undulation in the road. It would just want to, it, would, it was just starting to skate about it. And so I got me a bit, got a bit nervous. There's good news too, though. This is saying 77.2. We've gained five mile an hour with the tyres. Yeah, great. That's bang on. Before the final run of the day, the official timing gates are set up to accurately record Guy's average speed over the fastest 100-metre section of the track. And the team adds weight to the gravity racer in an attempt to improve its handling and acceleration. With five litres of water and therefore five kilograms of mass added, Guy gets an immediate improvement in handling and speed. 81.8 miles per hour. We're nearly at the record now when we've got all these other things to try, so yeah, yeah, we went, went to bed full of confidence, full of confidence. The team arrived back on the mountain with a very clear plan. The plan is to break the record. <laughs> we got so near yesterday. There might have been tension in the team, but for me, I was just going, do what I do, just do what I do. Do what I do, it's mega, I'm like a big kid getting to drive this go-kart, it's mega. With another five and a half litres of water added behind Guy's head, the gravity racer now weighs exactly 200 kilograms, and the tyres have been pumped right up to 77 psi. Oh. Time to try and break a world record. We had a, a perfect start, the line looked good, and yeah, as we saw him disappear around the bend, it was sounding good as well. It fell fast. You're licking on. You knew every mile an hour of it. Every little sat there. Got into the braking area. It gets a bit squirrely on the brakes, just a bit squirrely. There's a lot of weight to stop. Got to the bottom, lifted the canopy off. All right. How are you? All Even right. before then, I thought. <laughs> Grand job. Cheers, lads. Mega. Guy's done it. He set a new world speed record. Spot on. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. We've done it. It's just such a relief. Um, we've properly broken the record. Tell us, tell us. We're dying to know. He was like, yeah, we've done it. It was 85.612. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Couldn't believe it. Absolutely gobsmacked. I knew we were going to be fast, but so tough. Unbelievable. <laughs> they have the record, but Guy's not ready to stop. We're here to go as fast as humanly possible on this go-kart that we built, and we haven't done We're not at the, We haven't re reached its true potential. He really wanted to touch that 90 miles an hour. <laughs> Just get him in, but get him in. That's not the waiting. Come on. So let's, come on, let's have it. Let's have it. They decide to make a second run, but with another 10 kilograms now added, no one's quite sure how the racer will handle. Just, just be safe. Be safe. Go. 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 Oh, I hope it goes all right. I braked into the first corner, and it. Ooh, I just thought, oh, that feels a bit strange. The back end wanted to come round, and I had to let off the brakes and then get back on the brakes again. So I lost a load of momentum. And what I should have done was just ease the brakes on, sort the issues out, or just a few things and then take it back to the top and have another go. But I didn't do that. I didn't do that. And I thought, well, actually, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? It's coming. He's starting to break. Oh, hey, I'm trying to pull out. Let's go. 
<laughs> I'm trying to come to a control stop, but I'm going to crash. It went sideways, and then I just saw a bit of red from the barriers. I saw Tarmac Sky, Tarmac Sky, Tarmac Sky. And then I was just looking at the floor, I was sliding upside down on my helmet, I could hear me rattling about. Despite a massive crash at almost 90 miles per hour, Guy climbs out of the gravity racer completely unscathed. As soon as everything had stopped, I thought, oh, scratch my helmet. Scratch my helmet. My mate paints them. Scratch my bloody helmet. <laughs> you got it on the camera. You got it on the camera. I've had it. Best crash of the year. I don't know if that was best crash of the last few years. <laughs> 